I'm not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Wait. What? Are you serious? You know what? I wouldn't be in it now if they gave me a million dollars. Are you serious? I'm not. We've all witnessed Cher, the goddess of pop, dazzle us with her timeless beauty and compelling performance. But do you know the dark secrets behind her glamorous image? Her life is far from a fairy tale, and for nearly eight decades, Cher has faced countless daunting challenges and profound struggles that have scared her deeply. In this video, you will see the shocking and unfiltered truth about the hardships that Cher has endured. Enjoy watching. Broken Family Cherilyn Sarkisian was born into a world that was far from glamorous. On May 20, 1946, in the arid town of El Centro, California, she came into the arms of her young mother, Georgia Holt, who had no idea what to do with her, and her father, John Sarkisian, who was a handsome but unreliable truck driver. Sadly, her parents' love story was turbulent and soon turned into a bitter saga of betrayal and divorce. Let's rewind and dive into the intriguing details of this broken family. It all began when Georgia Holt, a teenager with dreams as big as the California sky, met the charming truck driver John Sarkisian. Working at a donut shop in Fresno, she couldn't resist his good looks and smooth talk. They were married in a hasty ceremony in Reno, Nevada, but little did Georgia know that her happily ever after would soon turn into a nightmare. As quickly as the marriage happened, Georgia realized she had made a mistake. I left him the day after, she recalls. But John, ever the persuasive one, convinced her to give it a try for three months. And just like that, before the three months were up, Georgia found herself pregnant with Cher. The pregnancy became a reason for them to try and salvage their relationship, but eventually, it was not meant to be. Cher's parents divorced when she was just 10 months old and the whole broken family thing really affected Cher. She didn't know much about her dad and felt left out. Kids at school teased and bullied her, making her feel like she didn't belong. Plus, not having a dad around made her wonder why he left. Cher blamed herself for her parents' breakup and felt like she didn't deserve love. Growing up, she carried this heavy feeling of not being good enough, which stuck with her throughout her life. When Cher turned 11, her mom briefly patched things up with John Sarkeesian, but their relationship was still a mess, with her dad dealing with gambling and drugs. Then John Southall, Holt's third husband, came into the picture and become Cher's true father figure. But did it bring her the stability and love she yearned for? Sadly, it didn't. Southall, a struggling actor, was married to Holt for five traumatic years. Their marriage was a disaster, marked by constant arguments and infidelity. And to make matters worse, they often separated and reconciled, creating a turbulent environment for Cher, who had to witness their fights and suffer their neglect. Cher's unstable childhood. Growing up with a wandering and poverty-stricken lifestyle, Cher's childhood was far from stable and her unstable childhood was a result of her mother's restless and unhappy life. Georgia Holt married seven times, twice to John Sarkeesian, and had several affairs and flings. Also, her frequent divorces and failed relationships forced Cher to move around a lot, often staying with her grandparents or other relatives for months at a time while her mother searched for work in the entertainment industry. Cher never had a normal childhood. She had to grow up fast and take care of herself and her mother. At the age of two, Cher faced one of the most traumatic experiences of her life. Her mother, who was broke and desperate, placed her in a Catholic orphanage for several weeks, hoping to find a job and a place to live. Cher felt abandoned and terrified and cried every night. But despite the financial struggles and the emotional turmoil, there was one thing that brought a smile to Cher's face, music and acting. In fifth grade, Cher produced a performance of the musical Oklahoma for her teacher and class. She directed and choreographed the dance routines for a group of girls, even acting in the male roles and singing their songs. Despite her passion for performing, Cher felt unattractive and untalented. 
I couldn't think of anything that I could do. I just thought, well, I'll be famous. That was my goal, she later commented. But her drive and determination paid off as she went on to become a successful actress and singer. Cher's mother's frequent divorces meant that they often lived paycheck to paycheck. We ate a can of stew or a can of beans one week, but then sometimes we lived in Beverly Hills. It was a very strange life, Cher said. Her mother's struggles also meant that they couldn't afford nice clothes or shoes, leading to Cher feeling ashamed of her appearance. I remember being really ashamed of my clothes, she recalled. I was so hard on my shoes. My mom would say, Jesus Christ, Cher, we can't afford shoes. Stop this. I remember going to school with rubber bands around my shoes to keep my soles on. Cher's academic challenges. School was an immensely challenging experience for Cher. She found herself feeling like an outsider in high school, but that didn't mean she lacked direction. From a young age, Cher had a clear vision of her future. She wanted to be a star. In Mark Bago's 2001 biography, Cher, If You Believe, the singer revealed that academics held little interest for her. I despised school because I never quite fit in, Cher reminisced. My mind was always elsewhere, dreaming about my future fame, where I would live, who I would date, and what fabulous dresses I would wear. High school just didn't capture my attention. But Cher's dreams of stardom were just one piece of the puzzle when it came to her academic struggles. Cher has dyslexia, a learning disability that affects her reading comprehension, spelling, and writing abilities. Growing up in a time when dyslexia was poorly understood, Cher often faced accusations of laziness. However, her mother was always there to support her. Cher fondly remembers her mother telling her that school wasn't important and that she would have someone else to handle numbers for her when she grew up. Cher remembered her high school difficulties in an interview with the University of Michigan's Dyslexia Help website admitting that her grades were a mix of D's, F's, and C's in some classes, while others earned her A's and B's. School was a real struggle for me, Cher admitted. My report cards always said I wasn't living up to my potential. Eventually, the frustration became too much for the 16-year-old Cher, and she made the difficult decision to drop out of school during her 11th grade. Freedom and the Tragic Chapter of Love at the tender age of 16, Cher made a bold decision after she dropped out of school. She left her mother's house and went to Los Angeles with a trusted friend. Determined to pursue her dreams, she enrolled in acting classes and took up various odd jobs to support herself. In the evenings, she would grace the stages of small clubs along Hollywood's iconic Sunset Strip, mesmerizing audiences with her dance moves and captivating presence, there was one more thing she did. She never hesitated to approach anyone who she believed could help her on her path to success. She sought out performers, managers, and even agents eager to make new contacts and land auditions. Eventually, this relentless pursuit of her dreams soon lead her to a fateful encounter that would change her life forever. In November 1962, Cher attended a party where fate intervened. It was at this gathering that she crossed paths with Sonny Bono, a talented performer working for renowned record producer Phil Spector. At the time, Sonny was a 28-year-old recently divorced man with aspirations of conquering the music industry. On the other hand, Cher was at the verge of being kicked out by her roommates, and she was desperately in need of shelter. With her back against the wall, Cher summoned the courage to approach Sonny and share her predicament. Hi, listen, she began, pouring out her heart. I'm going to have to move out of our apartment because I'm sick and broke. I don't want to go back home. I just want to get out there and make things happen, but I have no place to live. Cher's words hung in the air as she anxiously awaited Sonny's response. To her surprise, Sonny offered a solution. Can you cook and clean? He asked. Faced with a dilemma, Cher made a bold choice. She fibbed about her culinary skills, hoping it would secure her a place to stay. Sonny, unimpressed by her physical appearance, agreed to let her stay in his house, with the condition that she would take care of the domestic duties. 
Despite initially keeping their relationship strictly platonic and professional, Sonny and Cher's undeniable chemistry soon ignited sparks both on and off stage. Their careers skyrocketed in 1965 with the release of their iconic hit song, I Got You Babe. This enchanting melody became an anthem for young love against all odds, resonating deeply with the youth culture of the swinging 60s. The duo, known simply as Sonny and Cher, became international sensations, captivating audiences worldwide. The final chapter for the perfect couple. Sonny and Cher, renowned for their hit song, I Got You Babe, experienced a wave of success with subsequent hits, such as the re-release of their first single, Baby Don't Go, and the 1967 hit, The Beat Goes On. Riding high on this triumph, the duo ventured into the world of cinema with the 1967 comedy film, Good Times. Unfortunately, this endeavor proved to be both a critical and commercial failure, leaving Sonny and Cher disappointed. Undeterred, the couple decided to invest a significant portion of their hard-earned fortune into another film called Chastity. This drama was written and produced by Bono, with Cher as the lead actress. However, their hopes were dashed once again, as the film flopped, pushing them perilously close to financial ruin. It seemed that fate had a cruel sense of humor, as changing tastes in music rendered their light, folky pop style outdated, with younger audiences gravitating towards heavier psychedelic sounds. Burdened by mounting debts, Sonny and Cher made a desperate move to salvage their careers by transforming into a nightclub act and seeking refuge in Las Vegas. Ironically, it was their Las Vegas lounge act that ultimately paved the way for their resurgence in popular culture. Their act, a delightful blend of music and comedy interspersed with Cher's razor-sharp deadpan insults directed at Bono, caught the attention of television producers. So, in 1971, the Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour made its debut and quickly became a rating sensation. However, cracks began to appear in their relationship by the following year. Although both Cher and Bono engaged in extramarital affairs, it was Bono's relentless womanizing that took its toll on Cher. When Cher looked back on this turbulent time, she said bluntly, one woman or even five was not enough for him. Despite the strain on their marriage, Sonny and Cher chose to remain together for the sake of their business interests. They struggled to maintain a facade of marital bliss while pursuing relationships with other partners, some of whom even resided in their shared home. In an intriguing diary entry on August 21, 1973, Bono wrote, My public wife is still Cher in order to maintain all the things I want right now. That's the way it has to be. However, the burden of upholding this public illusion became unbearable, leading to their separation in 1974. Cher subsequently sought a divorce, citing involuntary servitude as the grounds for dissolution. Their divorce was finalized in 1975, leaving Cher virtually penniless and owing millions to her ex-husband. The reason for this financial burden stemmed from a contract that Cher failed to fulfill as part of Sonny and Cher's partnership. It never occurred to me that I would be charged for contracts we didn't fulfill, she further lamented. We worked side by side for 11 years, and I ended up with nothing. A new chapter of independence. After bidding adieu to the Sonny and Cher comedy hour, Cher's self-titled solo show became an instant hit shattering Bono's prophecy that America would despise her. Meanwhile, Bono's own venture, the Sunny Comedy Review, crashed and burned after a mere season. Cher was captivating TV audiences, but her fortunes as a recording artist were far from glorious. Her albums, Stars and I'd Rather Believe in You, failed to make a mark on the charts, leaving her discouraged. Even her collaboration with Greg Allman in To the Hard Way couldn't ignite the spark that fans craved, another chapter of love. While going through the chaos of her divorce with Sonny Bono, Cher found solace in the arms of Greg Allman, the hard-partying rocker from the Allman Brothers Band. But did this new chapter of love end any better? Let's find out. 
Their brief romance led to a hasty marriage just three days after her divorce from Bono. However, their union was short-lived, with Cher filing for divorce just nine days later. It seems Allman's struggles with alcoholism and heroin abuse were too much for Cher to handle. In a surprising twist, Allman managed to win Cher back by pledging to get clean and sober. But some speculate that Cher's decision to reunite with Sonny Bono in 1976 was driven by the prospect of reviving their successful variety show. But did the reunion help? Well, it only made things worse. This reunion added fuel to the fire of their tumultuous relationship, leading Allman to file for divorce once again. However, when he discovered that Cher was pregnant with their son, Elijah Blue, he had a change of heart and they remained married until their final split in 1978. The birth of Elijah Blue brought about a profound shift in Cher's perspective. She loved Allman, but couldn't bear the thought of leaving their son alone with a drug addict. As she candidly admitted to Vanity Fair, it's hard finding a drug addict who is also going to be a father. The challenges they faced as a couple were undeniably complex. Cher's quest for stardom, Divorce can be a devastating blow, but for Cher, it became the catalyst for a new chapter in her career. After parting ways with Greg Allman, she boldly signed with Casablanca Records, ready to conquer the music world once again. Little did she know that disco would be waiting to test her mettle. In the era of disco domination, Cher found herself under pressure from her label to embrace the dance-oriented pop sound but Cher considered herself a rock artist through and through. Reluctantly, she decided to give in and record an album called Take Me Home. Now, imagine a rock goddess forced to dabble in disco. It was a clash of genres that could have spelled disaster, but fate had other plans. The title track of the album turned out to be a smash hit, moving Cher back into the limelight and transforming her into a disco diva on par with the legendary Donna Summer. Who would have thought? Buoyed by her success, Cher set her sights on her next album, Prisoner, which was meant to showcase both her rock and disco sides. But here's where things took an unexpected turn. Cher, true to her rebellious nature, insisted on including less danceable material. It was a bold move that ultimately sealed the fate of the record. History seemed to be repeating itself as Prisoner failed to make a mark on the charts. But Cher was not one to back down easily. Determined to prove herself as a rock star, she formed the band Black Rose in 1980 with none other than her on-again, off-again boyfriend, guitarist Led Dudek. The stage was set for a rock and roll revolution. Their self-titled release was a raw and edgy rock record, complete with biting lyrics and screaming guitars. Finally, Cher had a chance to shine as the lead singer in a hard rock band, but the absence of her name on the album's cover left fans scratching their heads. Who was this mysterious Black Rose? The confusion led to dismal sales and left Cher wondering what went wrong. By 1982, both Black Rose and Cher's relationship with Dudek had come to an end, hitting the big screen. With her recording career in a slump, she decided to shift her focus to acting. Little did she know that her journey to the big screen would be filled with unexpected twists and turns. Cher's first roles into acting came with the movies Good Times and Chastity. Unfortunately, these films failed to make a mark both critically and commercially. And to make matters worse, the Hollywood establishment didn't take her seriously as an actress. And it was a bitter pill for the superstar to swallow. There was also a very embarrassing moment she experienced. Imagine the lights dim, anticipation fills the air, and the audience eagerly awaits the introduction of their favorite stars. Meryl Streep's name is announced, and thunderous applause erupts. Kurt Russell's name follows suit, and the applause continues. Then comes the moment everyone had been waiting for. Cher. But instead of applause, laughter fills the theater. Cher's heart breaks as she witnesses the audience's reaction. However, little did she know that this laughter would be fuel for her determination. Despite the initial humiliation, Cher found solace in the words of director Mike Nichols. 
He reassured her over the phone, saying, They may laugh in the beginning, but they won't be laughing in the end. His words proved prophetic when Cher received an Academy Award nomination for her supporting role. It was a turning point in her career, paving the way for future success. Cher's talent shone brightly in films like Mask, but it was her star turn in the romantic comedy Moonstruck that truly catapulted her to stardom. In 1988, she won an Oscar for her unforgettable performance opposite Nicolas Cage. Accepting the award with her signature wit, she quipped, I don't think this means that I am somebody, but I guess I'm on my way. Cher had arrived, but an unexpected incident was on its way. The unexpected Broadway attack. Just when Cher's acting ambitions were soaring high, fate had another surprise in store for her. During her first onstage gig ever in Come Back to the Five and Dime Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean, she encountered a terrifying incident at a stage door. As she arrived at the theater, a stranger approached her, turning stage fright into a whole new level of fear. The stranger's innocent gesture of extending his hand quickly turned into a nightmare for Cher. He forcefully grabbed her arm and threatened to kill her if she made a sound. But fate intervened once again when two fans turned friends witnessed the distressing scene. They screamed and ran towards Cher, scaring off the attacker. This harrowing experience left Cher wary of encounters with fans on the streets. Health challenges. As Cher was at the pinnacle of her success, life dealt her a cruel blow. She contracted the Epstein-Barr virus and it threatened to derail her career. But how did she cope with it? It all started during a live performance in 1990 when Cher looked exhausted on stage. She later confessed that she felt too old for this and couldn't move around as she used to. It wasn't until she was working on Mermaids that the symptoms started to show. Production had to be stopped to give her time to recover. But did she turn down acting offers or did they dry up? Well, she said, I got really sick. For two years, I couldn't work. It was terrible. All these movie offers were coming in, but I had to turn them all down. And when I came back, I had to work my way back up from the beginning doing concerts and stuff like that. In 2008, Cher also revealed that she came close to dying from pneumonia. And in 2021, she tweeted about how hard it was to deal with the infection. I had pneumonia and I couldn't breathe. I couldn't stand to take a shower, she wrote. But this was not the only thing she had to deal with. Cher later revealed a shocking part of her past, the struggle of motherhood. On Twitter, Cher shared her deeply personal experience as a young woman, battling through the heart-wrenching ordeal of not one, not two, but three miscarriages. At the tender age of 18, she found herself alone in their house, engulfed in sorrow and despair. As Sonny Bono returned home, he discovered Cher sobbing and rocking on the floor, a sight that would forever be etched in their memories. But that was not the only struggle she faced as a mother. Cher's illustrious career demanded her undivided attention, leaving little room for her to embrace the conventional role of a mother. In an interview with Entertainment Tonight in 2014, her youngest son, Elijah Blue Allman, peeled back the layers of his troubled childhood. Imagine being sent off to boarding school at the tender age of seven. It's no wonder that Elijah felt a pang of isolation, as if he were being shunned from his mother's world. Though time has allowed him to come to terms with his past, a flicker of resentment still lingers within him. I'm making peace with it because you just have to, he reflects, but it doesn't mean it's right. It's still wrong to do that. Despite the challenges they face, Elijah's admiration for his mother remains steadfast. She's really talented. She's gorgeous. I mean, she's Cher. What's not to love? Cher's struggle with acceptance. Behind the dazzling lights and extravagant costumes, Cher faced a profound challenge, accepting her transgender child, Chaz Salvatore Bono, born chastity son Bono, Chaz embarked on a two-year female-to-male transition that began in 2008. 
Initially, Cher found it difficult to embrace Chaz's newfound identity. In an interview, Cher confessed, I didn't go through it that easily. I feared losing the child I love. Who would this new person be? Will I have lost somebody? These open-ended questions highlight the emotional roller coaster Cher experienced during this transformative period. Despite her initial struggle, Cher's love for her child triumphed over all. Becoming an ardent advocate for LGBTQ rights, she embraced Chaz's happiness as the utmost priority. The pressure of remaining forever young. In an industry obsessed with youth, Cher has become the epitome of defying age. Renowned as the poster girl for cosmetic surgery, she fearlessly admits to having undergone various procedures. Yet even for an icon like Cher, not all transformations were smooth sailing. Her breast operations turned into a nightmare, leaving her worse off than before. She said, if anything, they were worse after than before. This revelation piques our curiosity about her subsequent surgeries. But despite this traumatic experience, Cher's determination to stay youthful remains unyielding. Beyond cosmetic procedures, she attributes her radiant glow to a holistic approach to self-care. In an interview with The Sun, Cher reveals her secrets, abstaining from alcohol and drugs, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, and staying physically active. She emphasizes the importance of putting in effort to look and feel good from the inside out. It seems that no matter what challenges come her way, Cher rises above them with grace and determination. But what is it about Cher that captivates generation after generation? Is it her unwavering dedication to her craft? Or perhaps it's her authenticity? Let's know what you think in the comment section. Thanks for watching. For a more thrilling story, click now on the next video that pops up on your screen.